lovely picture of, uh, of uh, the church being a mother. Yes. And I'd say that it'd be easy for me to go from there to uh, the mother of Jesus Christ, our blessed mother, and I'd love your comments on her. Well, I think of her as a very liberated woman indeed. The mother of God is, after all, a fairly liberated person. And uh, I think, therefore, that many of these rather controversial matters tend to fall into quite a different perspective when put against that ground. And uh, that enormous ground, and all enveloping ground, gives these little daily controversies a rather different uh, stance or a different view altogether. Yes. So I think, the, uh, I think of Our Lady as a perpetual means of aid in my studies. I, I think of her as our mother of good studies all the time. And she herself, having spent her years in the temple as a young girl studying the scriptures, has always been made uh, the patron of studies, has she not? Yes, Our Lady of the Studies. And uh, this, it seems to me, at a time like this, uh, is a very great role for her to play because the things that we now have to study in the world are rather tremendous and uh, new. How would you relate to Our Blessed Mother as a, a model, as an inspiration? You remember uh, this, the text in which she is spoken of as having played before God in the beginning. That's right, in one of the, um, for the 8th of December Mass, that epistle just But this, this image of her as having played before God in the beginning is, I think, relevant to our, our relation to her today because she is not only a mother of good studies, but a, mo a mother of all the joy and all the, all the excitement and, and satisfaction to be found in study and in understanding. Her own relation to these things was joyful. And her own, uh, her, her whole being is playful and joyful. She is also our, our, our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Mercy. But in this relationship of studies, there is that of joyful discovery. And we live in a world in which discovery uh, is not only a source of joy, but discovery is now possible on a fantastic new scale. In the electric age, the amount of information available to man about himself and about the rest of mankind and about the world we live in, the amount of information available instantly and totally at all times is beyond anything that previous ages ever knew. And so I think of her as having a specially important role to play in this age of tremendous learning. Would you say that, uh, that women out today can really... Uh practically, in a practical way, find guidance and invitation to confront their problems and solve them. And would you say that womanhood in a special way is a victim today? As I think that women have become the victims of, as they say, a man's world. But a man's world at the last gasp of its old pattern of extreme specialism and fragmentation the world that we are leaving behind us, the old 19th century world of hardware and industrial specialism and job holding, all this kind of world is yielding to a new world of role playing and joyfulness and fulfillment in depth rather than in the superficial uh, functionary pattern of the job holder. Now women today are caught between these two worlds. And they want to be liberated from the old world. They want to be initiated into the joys of the new role-playing and the new depth involvement in a great and exciting life. Actually, uh, it's, uh, it's too obvious to me that uh, the family represents a much richer role for all members of the family than anything else that is available to man that uh, the family as a means or as a, a situation for role playing and involvement is not only immemorial and uh, but is a profoundly natural to man and profoundly uh, necessary for his daily nourishment and comfort and so of all the times in the world when women might find their fulfillment through role playing this the age of the poor being misbegotten nuclear family would seem to be the time when the Our Lady had the greatest relevance and the greatest role-playing power of all. Would you develop that word role-playing? What do you uh, mean by well, that? Well, uh, when, when a person has a job, they are specializing in some function. Uh, an artist, it is said that an artist is always at play because he uses all of his faculties. 
He's always at leisure. When a man is only using a few of his faculties, like adding up his income tax, he's specializing, he's not playing, and he's not at leisure. But the artist or the playful, creative person, using all of his faculties simultaneously, he is at leisure, he is playing, and he is in role. Now, when a person is in role, they don't have a job, they have many jobs. And to have a home is not to have a job, but to have dozens and dozens of jobs simultaneously. This calls for great flexibility and great diversity and great tolerance and great flexibility of spirit. And the role player, therefore, is a very rich person. And a mother's role is never, you can't prescribe it, it's totally unpredictable. She has to be many things at many times of the day. And so role playing in that sense is a world in which you have a vast repertory of parts to perform simultaneously. Well, if I get you rightly, then that um, the role of a mother and a wife is the most is so satisfying and so providing leisure and joy and is that and what? involvement and satisfactions and fulfillment and quality of life and everything they're talking about. On the other hand, it's perfectly obvious that the family has been ripped off, as it were. In our kind of world, the extreme mobility of the hardware components of the world around it have destroyed the community in which the family normally is embedded. The matrix of the family, the community, has been ripped off by new instruments of transportation which simply eliminate the neighborliness and the natural rapport that men have with one another by proximity and daily dialogue and familiarity. It is the daily dialogue and familiarity that has been ripped off by rapid transport so that people now go as quickly to Berlin or, or to uh, Munich or to Moscow uh, as formerly they made a short journey uh, or rather a 30 or 40 mile journey to some neighborhood in their, on their own, uh, in their own country. Now this has temporarily at least destroyed what we call community. And so the family is left isolated, the nuclear family, stark, naked, unsupported by community. Now a family in which you have no community is naturally one that is put under a terrible stress. If only the members of the family uh, are there to constitute community yes. and, and neighborliness, this is, is surely bare bones. And it's a pretty stark situation. So this is one of the contributing factors to the, uh, the trauma and the distress that a family is suffering today. Would you think that this is passing, that there's a hope that uh, community yes. will be restored? Paradoxically, the, as, as the instruments of transportation speed up greater, to greater and greater speeds, then instead of people being thrust apart, they're brought back closer together again. So that the, even the nuclear family can now be reunited by jet plane on weekends. Well, we're, our time is out, and I want to say in behalf of those that have been enriched so well by you, and most of all on behalf of myself, Marshall, a million thanks to you. Well, thank you, Father. I hope that we have been right on, as they say.